Welcome back to a new episode about how to insert data in a table. At the end of the previous episode, I showed you how you could insert data in the table users. You need to be in the right database, so in PHP tutorials, that you need to click on the insert button at the top and enter the data. This was pretty easy, but there's another way of doing this, and that's with queries. And in this episode, I want to focus on creating our own query to insert data. The reason why I want to show you this way is because we actually need to create queries later on in our PHP code to get information out of the database. So therefore, I think it's pretty important for you to learn how this actually works. We're in our table users, in our PHP tutorial database, and you can see that we added two rows. The ID will increment automatically, and the name and password is set by us. So right now, I want to click on SQL on the top of my screen. So let's click on it. And right here, we can create a query that will insert information for us. And the reason why this is actually way easier than what we did in the previous episode is that you can add more than one or two lines. So let's open a new tab. Uh, let's write down localhost slash php my admin. Excuse me, php my admin. Let's click on PHP Tutorials and open our Users table just to get the structure of our table. So we need to insert a username and password because our ID will be automatically incremented. So let's go back to our other tab. Well, let me remove my select query right now. And the way you insert data is by using the keyword in capital letters, insert, into. And this statement is used to insert a new row in a table. And after into, hit the space. And now we need to specify the table where we want to insert it into. So in our case, we want to insert data into users. So let's write down users, space, parentheses. So let's go right inside of our parentheses. And right here, we need to write down the name of the first, second, third, and so on column that we have and want to insert data into. So if we go back, we have username and password. So let's write them down, username, comma, space, password. Now remember, we do not need to write down ID because ID is auto increment. So now that we have specified the columns, we need to write down a keyword values. So let's hit space, values, space, parentheses. What we actually want to do right now is to add a new record inside of our database. And we have to specify the values that we want to insert into the columns. So let's go inside our parentheses. And because we have string values, we need to write down single quotes, comma, space, another set of single quotes. So let's go right inside of the first single quotes and we need to write down a username. So let's say Dari08. And my password will be my PWD. And you also need to be aware that the value cannot be empty because, well, let me go back to my previous tab. And let's click on structure. And you can see that ID, username, and password cannot be null. So it cannot be empty. So we need to have a value. Let's go back. Now let's click on go. And you can see that one row is inserted. So let's click on our table. And you can see that we have a new row with an ID of three, a username of Dari08, and a password of mypwd. So right now we inserted just one row but we could actually insert way more. So let's click on SQL again, and let's do the same thing. So let's say insert into users, set of parentheses, values, another set of parentheses. And the first one is username, comma, password. And the value is Dari09, comma, Password is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you want to add more than one value, you need to copy paste the set of parentheses of the value 
paste a comma after the last one, hit a space, and paste it. And let's change the value to value 10. And let's click on go. Well, let's copy our query first because we will need it one more time. And let's click on go. And you can see that two rows are inserted. Now let's click on our table. And you can see that Dari09 and Dari10 just got created. And lastly, I want to show you what will happen if there is an error message in the query. So let's click on SQL again. Let's paste our query right here. And let's remove the single quotes of the second set of values. Now if you click on Go, you can see that, well, we're getting an error message and our query cannot be executed. And if you read the query, unknown column, Dari 10 in field list. And you can see that since we haven't used single quotes around it, the query thinks that we're working with columns instead of rows. What we eventually want to do is to write the query that we just created inside PHP codes. Well, let me remove the error. So what we actually created right here we want to write this in PHP code, which then runs the SQL code from PHP into the database, depending on the query that we inserted inside the PHP code. And right now, this might sound pretty confusing, but it will actually get a lot easier whenever you do it. This was it for this episode. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.